So if your work is based on his work and his work is based on your work, exactly then... which came first? It's like a snake eating its own tail. Hey, welcome back to Screen Crush. I'm Ryan Airy, and I know Loki seems really confusing. There's time loops and all this weird stuff, and it's like very unclear how this is gonna lead into Avengers the Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars, but we have an explanation for you. We are going to explain how time loops work. We're gonna explain how the TVA works, how it was founded, how this is all gonna lead into the next Avengers movie, and how the multiverse saga is going to come together, and how Loki and Kang are going to be at the center of it. So, Victor Timely just exploded into space ribbons. Don't worry though, Loki is going to bring Victor Timely back so he can become He Who Remains. And this is because Loki can rewrite the timeline. In the first episode, Loki was pulled through time because of time slipping, and he changed the present by influencing the past. So next episode, he will slip back in time and save the TVA from blowing into Kingdom Come. Now we know this because episode four confirms a theory that we have had ever since the end of season one, and that is that the multiverse is stuck in a time loop. Or well, what do you mean? Well, Victor became an inventor thanks to the TVA handbook, which was written by Ob, who wrote the book after learning everything he knew from a brilliant 19th century inventor named Victor Timely. But how could that be? It's all part of a predestined plan created by He Who Remains to save the multiverse. So this time loop theory is huge, and if we're right, it can explain how the MCU will give us the ultimate version of Kang the Conqueror. It was his plan, meant to protect all of time. Miss Minutes continues to be the creepiest MCU villain I have ever seen, like when she gleefully watched Doxa soldiers get crushed or seduced Victor Timely. And to celebrate her creepiness, we created this Miss Minutes parody, I Can Be Your Girl pinup shirt at our merch store at ScreenCrushMerch.com. Guys, we designed these shirts ourselves. A couple of my favorites are the usual variants, a parody of the usual suspects posters with the TVA jumpsuit wearing variants of the Terminator, Doc and Marty, Ash from Evil Dead, and Doctor Who. There's also the variant hoodie with our own variant Screen Crush logo that reads Be Kind, Rewind Always, and a of course, we have Doug as Loki. I do not approve of having my- Shopping our merch store is the best way to directly support our channel and everything we do here. Thank all of you for nerding out with me every day. This job is literally a dream come true. So let's get started. Okay, real quick before we break down what happened in episode four, let's rewind back to episode three where we are first introduced to Victor Timely. So when Ravona Renslayer travels back to 19th century Chicago, Ms. Minutes tells her to drop the TVA handbook in the window of a young Victor Timely. At this exact moment in time, Victor is just a kid at this point on the sacred timeline, but don't forget, when He Who Remains met Loki and Sylvie, he knew that he was going to die. He knew everything that was going to happen on the timeline. He might have even paved that road. So he probably had eons to create a contingency plan for when he dies. And so he is influencing his younger self to become the new He Who Remains. This makes Victor Timely sort of like Iron Lad from the comics. Or Tom Holland? Not exactly. Iron Lad is a younger version of Kang, whom Kang tried to influence with time travel to fulfill his destiny. Now, he rebelled against his predetermined path, went back in time, became Iron Lad, and helped found the Young Avengers. But eventually, he was forced to fulfill his destiny and become Kang. That's because Kang's destiny in the comics is also a time loop. And this is kind of similar to the comics, where Victor Timely is actually just a different version of Kang the Conqueror, much like Iron Lad is. So wait, he who remains is changing his own past? Not exactly. He can't change the past because the rules of time travel clearly state that. If you travel to the past, that past becomes your future, and your former present becomes the past, which can't now be changed by your new future. And we see that those rules still stand. When Renslayer travels to 1868, the title under the date says Sacred Timeline. And despite what is going on with the temporal loom and the TVA's present, the Sacred Timeline is still there. It's branching, but the loom is still doing its thing. Well, at least that was the case in episode three. So young Victor lives on the sacred timeline. Now this is odd because he who remains clearly stated that he and his variants originated from the 31st century. A variant of myself lived on earth in the 31st century. I guess it is possible that in the vast multiverse, there can be some unique versions of Kang. But we did post a video just a few days ago where we theorized that Victor Timely's essence, his temporal aura, is basically scattered across the time stream. And this one event, this spaghettification, is what actually created the massive amount of Kangs that we see in the multiverse. Perfectly not confusing. So somehow, this kid variant of Kang and He Who Remains found himself in the late 1800s. So how did he get there? Well, somebody inserted him into the past, more on who and why later on. After Renslayer gives Victor the handbook, she travels to 1893. Loki and Mobius follow her, and when they arrive, the title now says Branched Timeline. The sacred timeline did not change. Instead, there is now a diverging branch where Victor became a brilliant scientist. These timelines are so confusing. 
Victor needs to meet OB and teach him everything that he knows, so OB will write the handbook, which in turn will influence young Victor to become a scientist, because his loom invention will become the temporal loom in the future. Wait, which came first? And he who remains needed all of this to happen because he himself was a prisoner of this paradox. He might have managed the flow of time, but certain events still had to happen on the timeline, and he was powerless to prevent his inevitable death and the unraveling of the sacred timeline. You plunge your blade in my chest and an infinite amount of me start another multiversal war and I just end up right back here anyways. The time loop is real and Loki is responsible for this loop. I mean, just look at the chain of events since the end of season one. Loki's time slippery condition is triggered after Sylvie sends him back to the TVA. Loki time slips between the past, present, and future. So now we have Loki rewriting the timeline. A long time ago, he came to me complaining about time slipping. How did I not remember that? Wait, is he talking to you in the past and you're just now remembering it? Wow, that makes perfect sense. He meets OB, they discover that the loom is overloading, and this chain of events leads them to bring Victor Timely to the TVA. Victor helps OB solve the problem with the loom because he already created the solution for his own loom, which he built in his past. And that loom might have been the inspiration for the loom of the TVA. And Victor got those ideas from OB's book, which he wrote based on Victor's ideas. It's insane. I know this must be overwhelming if it's too much for you. And as we've mentioned in previous videos, OB represents this loop since Ouroboros is an ancient symbol of a snake eating its own tail. It signifies the circle of life, death, and rebirth, eternity, and loops. So how did Victor teach OB if they had never met? Simple buddy, time slipping. Loki's time slipping problem was fixed in the first episode, but the time slipping is obviously still gonna make a convenient comeback in the next episode. You don't introduce a really cool plot device like that and just fix it right away. Episode four ends with the loom blowing up and all of that temporal energy is about to wipe out the TVA. But Loki's time slipping will return and send him back to the past, and he will even get another chance to fix this mess. What could we have done differently? Now, up until the time that time slipping was introduced, you cannot rewrite the past with time travel. When someone goes back in time, they create a new branch. But now, somehow, Loki can rewrite the past, proving that once and for all, that Back to the Future was not a bunch of bullshit. Sir Hawk was wrong. Well, at the time he wasn't actually, something had changed with time. The events of Endgame and the entirety of the Infinity Saga all took place on the sacred timeline. This is why the time heist was supposed to happen despite the Avengers creating about four or five branches. Now those branches were pruned, but Loki was taken back to the TVA and this is how we have the show. He Who Remains spoke about the multiversal war that he ended eons ago, a war waged by his variants. He Who Remains One created the sacred timeline and put the TVA in place to ensure that his variants do not return. However, we've already seen that the Kangs are back in Quantumania, and this is just like He Who Remains predicted. The timeline is looping back on itself and everything that already happened in his past is rehappening again. It's like a snake eating its own tail. So, movies like Quantum Mania, Multiverse of Madness, No Way Home, and Spider-Verse, all of them are taking place in the present, relatively speaking. But get this, Loki is taking place before all of those movies and before everything else in the Multiverse Saga, as confirmed in this Marvel Cinematic Universe timeline book. Now, in relation to the plot of Loki, there is still no multiverse and the Kangs have not returned. Yet. Person, what are you talking about? Okay, let's sidebar the time slipping for a moment because we need to explain the multiversal timeline. Because we believe that we have solved exactly how this time loop started and what exactly is going on with Loki Season 2. I promise you this will make sense. When He Who Remains explains his origins, he starts by saying this. Eons ago, before the TVA. Before the TVA. We believe that everything before the TVA was pre-time loop. Multiversal travel was not discovered yet, so time travel did not merge with the multiversal timeline. According to He Who Remains, he and his variants discovered the multiverse in the 31st century. Before that, each universe had its own separate timeline. They did not weave together, and yes, there is a minor yet crucial distinction between universes and timelines. Universes look like giant galaxies with a black hole at the center. Timelines are represented as these blue energy strands. The timelines represent the flow of time in each universe, basically the temporal signature of that universe. The source code that shapes reality. But then the Kang variants fused time travel with multiversal travel. They broke the barriers between realities, resulting in branches from one universe growing and merging with the timelines of other universes. You lost me. I'm in the woods. Can't find me. I'm gone forever. I have no idea what's going on. The branching timelines basically overgrow each other through space-time, creating multiversal spaghetti. The multiverse. 
Now, space time became so cluttered, the time stream of one timeline was influencing others, hence creating a paradoxical loop in the multiverse. This could explain why the multiverse is so fragile. The overgrown branches have made it extremely unstable, and this is the cause for incursions. An incursion occurs when the boundary between two universes erodes and they collide, destroying one or both entirely. And according to Kang the Conqueror, his variants are triggering countless incursions and this is why the multiverse is dying. This is probably what will instigate the multiversal war just like it did eons ago. The incursions made the Kangs turn on each other and start this war. Each Kang had to fight and erase his variants to gain dominance of reality. He who remains one with the help of the TVA and a life, and then he created the sacred timeline. Now, there's a catch to the multiverse. You see, when he who remains says, Once I isolated our timeline, all I have to do is manage the flow of time and prevent any further branches. He isolated the sacred timeline, meaning there was a multiverse existing separate from the Earth 616 universe. I did not know that. And the Kangs emerged from the specific temporal signature of the timeline. And by he who remains isolating the sacred timeline, he ensured that the Kangs could not return. Now the Kangs are responsible for the multiversal chaos, so they had to go. All of them except the one that remains. But even he who remains had to step away from the timeline and live in the citadel at the end of time. He had to remove himself from the timeline as well as the memory of his existence. This is probably the reason why he erased the memories of everyone in the TVA after winning the war and why he installed the timekeepers as his figureheads in the first place. But despite his godlike control over time, he who remains couldn't prevent his own death and the unraveling of the sacred timeline because it was meant to happen. Once the loom finally overloads, the sacred timeline will no longer be isolated. The Kang variants will return. Their branching timeline will grow like temporal bridges from Earth 616 to other universes, and that leads to the multiversal chaos that we are seeing in this saga. And the baseline of Earth 616 is the events of the Infinity Saga. So everything up until the moment the Avengers did the time heist. When Tony Stark invented time travel, he opened the Pandora's box that will create Kang in the future. You f it up! You f it up! So the time heist is actually the inception of this multiversal chaos. And I'm pretty sure that Loki stealing the Tesseract is also a trigger point for the time loop. He was the first variant. That means that you can never just prune away or erase this Loki because without him, there would be no TVA. All of this has happened because those Infinity Stone thieves messed with space-time just because their friends and loved ones turned to dust. Oh, boo-hoo-hoo, my wife and child are dead. <gasps> now, here's a theory about how we got He Who Remains. Because Victor might be destined to become He Who Remains, but before he was He Who Remains, he was Kang the Conqueror. His statues adorn the TVA, and the multiversal saga needs a proper Kang for Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars. But we already got Kang in the MCU. The Kang from Ant-Man 3? The exact same one. So ever since Quantumania, our theory was that this Kang would return and become He Who Remains. And we still believe that is going to happen. But after the last couple episodes of Loki, our theory got an upgrade. First of all, there are many similarities between these two Kang variants, both in motivation, their war against the other Kangs, and like some other stuff. I've been dubbed many names by many people. A ruler, a conqueror, he who remains. And don't get over fixated about the scars. This dude lived for eons and controlled the whole freaking timeline. He can fix a couple scars on his face. Anyways, here's how we think he returns and how that sets this time loop into motion. Kang was thrown into his multiversal core. Yeah, dead Kang. Nope, he's not dead. The engine is the power source for Kang's multiversal traveling machine, but it's also connected to the multiverse and to time travel itself. Moreover, Scott shrunk the core and caused it to collapse on itself. So we don't think this killed Kang. Instead, he shrank to infinity because he was inside the quantum realm. He kept on shrinking through space and time. And don't forget what Hank Pym said about the quantum realm in Ant-Man 1. You would enter a reality where all concepts of time and space become irrelevant as you shrink for all eternity. So here's a crazy idea. In the opening scene of episode six of Loki season one, we see the universe from the outside. There's a giant black hole right at the center. And that means that everyone and everything in the universe exists within that black hole, which is an actual theory that some scientists have about the universe. The sky is blue because we live inside the eye of a blue eyed giant named Macumba. But when the camera zips into the black hole, we see how all the energy in the universe condenses into the sacred timeline. So what if Kang kept on falling through space-time until reaching the very bedrock of reality, finding himself in a void between all realities, a void at the end of time? And this is where he found Eliath. That first variant encountered a creature 
created from all the tears in reality. That is the beast that he who remains used to win the multiversal war. Now, Elias consumes variants and timelines. After that, Kang creates the TVA, wins the multiversal war, and becomes he who remains. Now, wait a minute, person. All this happened in the past, but quantum mania happened in the present. So how does that make sense? Well, dude, when speaking about Kang and the time loop, there is like no linear timeline. The void is located at the end of time. So the end is also where the timeline loops back on itself, and it then becomes the beginning of time. By entering the void, Kang basically exited the here and now, no longer being on a simple linear plane of existence. I don't live in a straight line. And this brings us back to Loki, because the ending of season two will be the direct result of the multiverse saga. He who remains knew about the time loop. He knew that he was going to die. He knew everything that was going to happen on the timeline up until the moment of reaching the threshold. So he needed a contingency plan to ensure that his mission would continue after his death. And that plan is Victor Timely and Loki. The timelines are free. It's up to us to protect them. It's up to us to do better than he who remains. Before his death, he who remains planted a variant of himself on the sacred timeline, most likely his younger self. Or why put himself in the past? Ah, well, this is where the time slipping comes in. Loki will time slip again. In fact, the loom overloading might have something to do with that. And in the next two episodes, Loki is going to influence the past even more than he did before. We are going to see the meeting of Victor and Obi. And I mean their first meeting, where Victor is going to teach an earlier version of Obi everything he knows. In fact, we might see how the entire TVA began. And He Who Remains has planned all of this. Don't forget, Sylvie used He Who Remains temp pad to send Loki back to the TVA, which sent him back in time. He Who Remains did something to this temp pad, which changed Loki's temporal aura, triggering the time slipping. The rules, the rules don't apply to you. You're special. You're uniquely and miraculously special. What are you talking about? However, Loki cannot just rewrite the timeline on a whim. He is restricted by the time loop. And we see this time loop in this episode. Loki has to prune his younger self, just like he himself was pruned by his future self, Ouroboros. So now, he who remains is dead. We see his body, and yeah, he is very dead. But Avengers the Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars need Kang. Not a he who remains, but the Kang, Kang the Conqueror. So he who remains plan is to create that Kang, and Victor Timely is gonna be him. But he's a con artist and a nerd. How can this guy be the new Thanos? Well, let me ask you this. Did anybody think that Walter White would end up being a cold-hearted drug kingpin? He's the Kang who knocks. Goddamn right. So, all of this means that with Loki's time slipping, Victor Timely will become Kang. He's destined to become He Who Remains, but that's going to happen later. But first, he's going to become Kang and wage the war against his variants. I'm not the man you think I am. It is your destiny. Who is Kang? Who I need to be. However, Loki's time slipping is also He Who Remains' secret weapon. He spent eons waiting on his inevitable end. So maybe he wants to break the loop more than anyone. That's why he offered Loki and Sylvia's place. He searches for an exit from this prison of time. So perhaps he triggered Loki's time slipping to influence the past and break this loop. However, the loop won't be broken in season two since obviously Kang is going to return. But perhaps Loki is going to be the key in Avengers 5 and 6. His time slipping could be the secret weapon against this nihilistic time loop. And in the end, Loki will somehow change the past and break the loop forever, allowing the multiverse to exist without the threat of the Kangs. All right, look, I know this is a massive theory, so what do you think about the time loop and Loki, and how will Kang and He Who Remains return? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below or at me on Twitter, and big shout out to the writer and editor of this episode, Pavel T. You guys, if it's your first time here, please subscribe, smash that bell for alerts. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.